Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is my review of the Canon CP1500, a compact photo printer that can make lab quality 6x4 inch postcard size prints from your phone, your computer, or your camera. And yes, you can also use it to make passport ID photos. Announced in summer 2022 is the successor to the best selling CP1300. It's available in black, white, or pink, and costs around $140 or pounds. In this video, I'll show you what's new, how it works, and find out whether it's worth buying. I'll start with media and running costs. The CP1500, like its predecessors, is not an inkjet printer and you cannot use your own ink or paper with it. Instead, it employs the same dye sublimation process as professional labs, and that needs special paper and an ink ribbon that is designed specifically for it. These are sold together in packs from Canon and contain exactly the right amount of ink for the number of sheets included. There's never anything left over. Note the CP1500 is not supplied with any media as standard, so you'll need to buy a pack or look out for a bundle from day one. Canon's KP36IP pack costs around $16 or pounds and contains paper and ink to make 36 postcard prints, so that works out about 44 cents or pence per print. Meanwhile, the RP108 pack costs around $35 or pounds, has enough paper and ink to make 108 postcard prints, and that works out around 32 cents or pence per print. So even when you buy the media in bulk, it's going to work out more expensive than most high street labs or online printing services. But of course, it gives you the convenience of printing whenever you like without delay. And even wherever you like too, if you buy the optional rechargeable battery pack. Although this actually costs a little more than the printer itself, so therefore more than doubling the overall cost. Like earlier models, the 6x4 inch or 148x100mm size is the biggest you can print. Although this is officially known as postcard size, it's not postcard thickness. The paper itself is really too thin to write on the back and directly mail, and in the absence of a sticky back, you'd ideally glue it onto a card or stick it in an envelope if you want to post it. Smaller and sticky back print options are available though, including 86 by 54 mil credit card size with optional sticky backs if you like, as well as 54 mil square stickers and 22 by 17.3 mil mini stickers. These all work with an optional loading tray that's gonna cost you about 16 bucks. Okay, so let's have a look around the printer itself, which is based on the previous CP1300 with a similar size and 850 gram weight, but with a number of tweaks. Most obviously, the 3.2 inch tilting screen of the 1300 has been switched for a slightly larger three and a half inch screen that's now fixed in position, but it's still not touch sensitive. Navigation is still performed by a four way pad with an OK button in the middle, but the buttons around it have been greatly simplified from eight on the early model to just three here. As before, the ink cassette is inserted into a compartment on the right side, while the flap on the front folds down to accommodate the paper cassette. This slots in for use, but can be removed and flipped shut for storage or transportation. With a flap on the front of the printer open, you'll notice an SD slot in the top left corner for directly inserting a memory card, while a single USB-C port on the left-hand side allows you to connect a card reader for other formats or USB storage. You can also connect the printer directly to a computer over USB or to compatible phones and cameras, although most people will probably prefer to use a wireless connection with their phone. I'll show you that in just a moment. Round the back is a socket for the supplied AC mains adapter, along with a removable panel to connect the optional rechargeable battery pack. This turns the CP1500 into a portable printer with enough charge for around 72 prints, but the battery costs around $200 or 180 pounds just by itself, greatly increasing the cost of the overall system. Okay, now for a demo of the Selfie CP1500 in practice. I've got the unit set up here, switched on and powered by the supplied AC adapter. Although if you had bought the optional battery pack, it would be connected to the back here. I've also preloaded the ink cassette in the side and the paper cassette in the front. And this is loaded with the standard six by four inch or 100 by 148 mil paper size. This is the postcard size print. You can see some examples here that I'll talk about in just a moment. But before I do that, I'm gonna actually get a print coming out of the machine right now. And the easiest way to do that is by inserting a memory card. Now there's a slot in the front for standard SD memory. So that's what I'm gonna go for right now. Slot that in the front. And you'll see that as soon as you do slot in a memory card or connect a card reader or something else to the USB port on the side, that immediately loads a bunch of thumbnails, which we can see here. But I wanna go back to the home screen to show you some of the options. The first option is just for standard prints. 
Then we've got some additional options here that allow you to print more than one on a sheet. That goes a little bit further here. This is a shuffle print where you can print up to eight or 20 images on one page. I'll show you that in a moment. We also have the ID photo, which is an extremely popular application, which again, I'll show you. Uh, the Wi-Fi options, which we don't need because I have a physical card inserted and some setup options. But the first thing I'm gonna do is just select a normal print to come out. So let's go back to browsing those pictures. Now the screen is bigger than it was before on the CP1300, but it's still quite low resolution and it, it's not touch sensitive either. So you do have to use these arrows to move around. I'm just gonna go back browsing through some of these pictures to one at the seaside that I took the other day. I like these pictures of deck chairs. Now, the only problem is, is I have actually looked at these pictures and seen that some of them are not in focus. Only one of them is in sharp focus. And unfortunately, I can't actually tell by going through this thumbnail view. Now, I know for a fact that this one is the correct image, so I'm gonna load that. But unfortunately, there's no way to actually zoom in on that or, or make it any bigger. If I go to the options, we can crop the image uh, to various sizes or move it around. Now you'll see here that I'm just moving the crop frame around. If I want to actually make that bigger, I've now got to go into this option. And if you think, yeah, that's about the right size. Now I want to move it left and right. Well, you now need to press menu again and go back and forth. But you know what? I was actually quite pleased with the original framing. So I'm going to print that. Now it says okay to go to a preview. And at this point, I'd expect the interface to actually show a little preview image here, but it, it doesn't, or at least it didn't on this unit, but it does let me adjust these options. I've got the postcard size. I've got a glossy finish. We can uh, adjust that if we prefer to a semi-gloss or satin look. I'm gonna go for glossy. You can go for a border or borderless. I'd prefer to fill the page if I could. And I'm ready to actually print this. So let's go for that. So you can hear the unit warming up and it's gonna take a sheet out. It goes to the back of the machine, uh, which is just off my frame here. And it's gonna pull it through four times. This is for uh, the three main color passes, cyan, magenta, and yellow. And then the fourth and final pass is an overcoat, which helps protect it. And you can also play around with the overcoat. It, it can be printed uh, in, a, in the same way as you can the other colors. You can actually have little shapes on it. But you can see each pass here is quite fascinating. That was the yellow and next the magenta. So here's the picture that I've just printed. Unfortunately, it is the one that is in focus. Luckily, I knew that to be the case. You'll notice that there's an extra stripe on either side. This is uh, actually part of the paper that's used to pull it through the machine. And you can snap these off. These are perforated edges. The easiest way to do that is to actually just fold it once and then fold it again. And you see that they well, it just literally falls off. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is how to do an ID picture because this is an enormously popular application for this machine. So the easiest way is I've got a portrait picture that I've already taken and that's on this memory card. I'm gonna okay this option and it gives me a few different sizes. I'm gonna go for the standard um, passport ID photo size. Select that and then it says, okay, well, choose your picture. So I'm gonna go down to where I know I've got some portraits. There we go. Now, again, it would be nice to actually check this for focus or to see what my expression is like, but I've already checked this on the camera screen, so I'm gonna okay that. And now what I wanna do is actually crop this image because this is too big or rather too wide to be a standard passport photo. So if I go for options and cropping, you'll see that there's a very neat guide here. And if you've seen one of these before, you'll know that the green line is supposed to go under the person's chin and the blue line is supposed to go on the top of their head. So I'm just gonna move this frame over to the side to see how much I'm gonna to need to shrink or enlarge it. So I need to shrink this frame a little bit. As you've seen before, I'll need to press this button again and I'm gonna reduce the size. I think that's too tight. That looks okay, but now I need to press menu again to just move it to the side. I think I'm gonna go for that and I don't think I need to move it left or right. That looks okay to me. And again, I've gone to this preview screen. It would be nice if the actual image was on that preview. I'm still not entirely sure why that's not the case, but we will print that out. Now, 
you could use this as a business. I know lots of people who've used the previous models as a business to actually print ID photos. But remember, this is a consumer unit, you know, don't expect it to be incredibly tough if you knock it around. You've got to be quite gentle with it. It does need to be on a flat surface to operate. Even if you have the battery, you have to be careful that dust or anything else doesn't get inside the unit or you will see them on the prints. Here is my set of six standard passport size photos. Now these probably wouldn't be accepted because my lighting wasn't very good on the side of my face, but it does show how quickly and easily you can produce these from just by popping in a memory card. Okay, so now I wanna show you printing from my phone. This is a Samsung Galaxy S20. So this is the Android experience. Everything I'm gonna show you is done with a selfie photo layout. This is a free app for Android or iOS. You can select any image that you've got on your phone. These could be pictures that you've taken with your phone copied onto your phone or downloaded from anywhere at all. And you can also uh, just print the single frames. You could print various layouts. We've got the bookmarks, the shuffle, and um, the ID photo that you'd uh, seen earlier. So this is pretty simple stuff. Here we can go into the options. We've got the different sizes, the different uh, glossy finishes, and whether you want the image to be optimized before printing. And this is where you can actually browse some of your images. Okay, so let's have a look at the options that are available. I can apply a border, change the color of that border, print a date. I can also adjust the overcodes. Now this is the shiny finish that goes over at the end of the print. And I can actually use it for selective printing. So instead of going over the whole image, I could actually draw a starburst or some snowflakes or love hearts. So that's quite a fun option if you desire. We can also print on as well as the date. You could have various icons, text, freehand drawing, a QR code, which I'll show you in just a moment, or other enhancements. But I'm just gonna print this directly to show you how easy it is on the Wi-Fi. So if I go print, it's now gonna try and find the printer. Now, this is actually creating its own Wi-Fi network between the phone and the printer, this is not going via my home Wi-Fi or any office Wi-Fi. This has gone directly from the phone to the printer. It's called an ad hoc network. And there was nothing else to do. Now, initially when I first turned on the printer, it did want me to effectively connect the two devices together. And it did that by displaying a QR code on the screen. So all I had to do was start up the app point it at the QR code and it automatically got all of the Wi-Fi settings to do this so that in the future it would be as quick and easy as this process. So here's the final print next to the image on my phone. Okay, so let's have a look at the QR code option in practice. And I'm gonna add a QR code, which in this case could be to invite you to RSVP or maybe to go to some various wedding services. And here's the QR code. I'm just gonna pop it in the corner we can change the size of it. Now it's small at the moment. You can go medium, large, extra large. That's a bit excessive, isn't it? While this is printing, I also wanted to show you what the black and white quality is like. Here's a picture which I took in black and white using, again, the Fujifilm X100V. If you like my pictures with the X100V, do check out my Instagram, at Camera Labs, because I've got loads of them on there. And this was taken with that Acros film simulation, which is a high contrast black and white. So this is what happens when you feed a black and white image directly to the printer. And I'd say that looks quite nice. Sometimes black and white pictures can look a little bit muddy when they're printed on a color device, but that looks all right to me. And my QR code picture has finished. So I dare you to scan that and check it out. Hope you'll enjoy what I've got for you there. And the last thing I wanna show you is what it would look like if you wanna print lots of pictures on one page. So again, I'm gonna choose the format here. I'm gonna choose eight pictures rather than 20 because I wanna get this finished today. I'm gonna to have this one, this one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and one more. Oh, a nice cheese sandwich, how about that? And the app is gonna go away and, and suggest this, this kind of random order. And do you know what? I love it. So let's have that printing out here. And here it is, a shuffle print made with those eight images which I had stored on my phone. 
Canon CP1500 updates one of their most popular photo printers, making it a little bit quicker to print and certainly easier to use while retaining the core capability of outputting lab quality postcard sized prints from a variety of sources including phones, computers and SD memory cards, all from the comfort and convenience of your home. The running costs of around 30 to 50 cents or pence per print makes it more expensive than most high street labs or online printing services. But like its predecessors, again, you have the convenience of printing at home whenever you like, or indeed anywhere you like if you do buy that optional battery pack, although this will more than double the initial cost. The print quality is on the whole very good, roughly matching most high street labs and a step up from inkjets. And the ability to easily make passport ID photos is a potential business within itself. Like earlier models, you may occasionally notice a faint vertical line on some of your prints, but this can normally be resolved by reloading or changing the paper. The CP1500 is also happiest operating on a flat surface, making it more of a transportable printer rather than a truly portable one. If you're looking to walk around with a printer, say at an event, well, handing out prints to people, then you're gonna be better served by one of the many Instax portable printers, which can operate at any angle, even in a bag or a pocket, if you like, and they already include rechargeable batteries as standard. But while the largest Instax prints come from the most recent wide model, they remain smaller and more expensive than the postcard size from the Canon CP1500. Ultimately, the CP1500, like the earlier models, is a fun and genuinely useful printer to have around your home, not to mention some businesses. It'll produce great looking photo prints easily, and unlike inject printers, it won't suffer from clogged nozzles if you leave it for a while. It's not as robust or truly portable like an Instax printer, but the prints are larger and cheaper. As long as you understand the limitations, I can recommend it. I hope you found that useful. If you do, I'd love it if you'd consider liking the video and maybe even subscribing to my channel for more photo gear reviews. Or if you're feeling extra generous, I'm always up for a coffee and there's links for that and the best prices on the printer in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.